This is an unlimited energy generator. The source of the energy is an inertial drive. This is our inertial drive. A spinning weight is an inertial drive. It pushes against nothing and puts a force in a direction. So this puts a force in this direction and that direction. Now this isn't the first machine like this that I built, but this one is engineered a little bit better. So it could be scaled up to run a whole uh, power plant. So the frame does have to be bolted down to concrete so it doesn't move and it has to be very sturdy. So this is our input and this is our output. So the inertial drive produces oscillations and then we have two rods with two uh, transmission sprags under there that convert the oscillations back into rotations. And the rotations are very slow, that's why we have this great big four foot pulley. So you can see when this moves backwards or forwards, it makes this go forward. And you notice when I hold it, the whole frame moves or flexes. Um, so the the stronger and more sturdy the frame is, and uh, how well it's anchored down is very important because we want all of this centrifugal force to go into our load. We do not want the frame to move. And now we have a spring here. And we have this limiting mechanism. So there's a slot here. And you don't ever want this to reach the ends of the slot. Uh, so you, it, it should be within this range. And it should be set up with the proper tension on the spring. So that with your load and your input, it never hits either end of the range. So what you can do is take two of the same springs, and these are different springs, but I'm just illustrating, and you can put threaded rod through that. So you have a spring on each side. You'd have a spring, you know, on this side too, and you would adjust the preload on the springs so that this could spin quickly and uh, it doesn't hit the end of our ring. So our energy, of course, comes from centrifugal force, which is mv squared over r. So we have lots of mass. This is about 96 pounds and velocity squared we want some speed and over radius. And we have a fairly small radius, seven inches about to the center of matter, center of mass. Um, so you can see most of the power is in the speed, but with more speed, you're gonna have more vibration. And the other sort of mathematical issue you run into is that there's not that much distance. So this travels about two and a half inches each way. So for one rotation, say you have four or five inches of travel. So work is force times distance over time. One horsepower is 550 foot-pounds a second. So you don't have a lot of distance, so that means you need a lot of force. So you end up spinning this at you know 300 rpm and you have two three four thousand pounds of force so this bearing these bearings and the whole frame has to withstand thousands of pounds of force that way 
or you can have a very small weight going at a uh, very fast speed, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 RPM. So you have lots of distance, so you need a lot less force, but then you do have more vibration and you have more windage, air resistance. So overall, I think this is a pretty good generator. Um, I don't have it quite working because my frame is, of course, way too weak and um, I need to bolt it down to something and I can't bolt it down to these, this wood floor. Um, but you can demonstrate it, that it does work, it does move fairly smoothly. And it's interesting because this uh, energy multiplier, if you put an infinite load, it actually spins better. So it's not like a traditional load that slows it down, but this motion back and forth does affect the speed of our weight. And that's why we have this spring on here because it works really well to keep that moving very smoothly, even with a load. And uh, the other thing is that it's velocity squared. So at low speeds, you don't get any power, but if I speed it up just a little bit, then the whole frame starts shaking and shuddering and moving. And that's a problem because uh, to demonstrate the load, I need the force to go into, the, for the centrifugal force to go into the load, not just move the whole frame around. So this could even power a car. Now obviously you want uh, higher speed and you want small weights. You might use five pounds, three pounds, even half a pound, just depending on your speed. Um, and um, with a car, you'd want a weight 180 degrees opposite. So you want like two of these, and you'd want them secured together so that as your car goes down the road, it's not going to try to shift sideways. So, like, this one goes this way, and then this one goes this way. So, they're balanced pretty much. So that's pretty much it. It's very simple. Uh, a lot of the designs I made just weren't engineered very well. This one, you have a bearing on the top, bearing on the bottom, the weight's in the middle. You know, this part is in the middle. Bearing on the top, bearing on the bottom. Spring is in the middle. Um, so, just uh, more straightforward and uh, you know, very simple. Very simple to build, it just has to be built really strong. You could make like a whole concrete sort of encasement so these bolts were in the concrete and uh, that might work. Um, yeah, so a spinning weight is an inertial drive. It's that simple, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work that well when the center is moving. It works best when the center is not moving that much. So it works really good when there's lots of load on this wheel, right? So the center can't move very much. Now, get some speed. So, so there's lots of resistance, and that's why you want great big pulleys so you can gear it out back to you know, a fast speed with uh, minimal frictional losses.